Good morning. We've got a beautiful day today. The sun is shining. It's going to be warm, but not super hot. Pretty humid, um, but I don't think it's going to be windy. It is a perfect day for spraying beans. So, we got to get the sprayer out, get her loaded up. Our irrigation stuff's going to be done in about an hour and a half. So, we're going to get one load sprayed before that. We're going to go up and move it, and then we're going to spray beans the rest of the day. head to the first field that we're gonna do all right we've got a 78 acre field here we should be able to do all of this plus just a little bit uh, it actually ends where that tree is we have a different bean field on the other side there that we can spray if uh, or when we're done here but I want to do this one first um, these are early beans they were planted a little bit later but they are early maturing I checked them yesterday no Sunday and they're ready to be sprayed so we do have a big wet spot right down in the middle there's a big draw there uh, there's jagged edges over in that side we've got to go around there's a wet spot in the back so this field's gonna, gonna take a little doing and then we got little spots like that that we just go right over those because they're too little to mess with pockets like that and oh yeah this big ground out spot they're reminders of the wet spring that we had yeah. Judging by that spot, and that spot, and that spot, would make you think that we're still really wet. But we're not. I promise we're not. Shut those outside two off when we're going over to a place with no beans. Uh, clearly we've got a broken tile or something that's causing us issues back here. Now, before you guys say, why don't you fix it or why don't you retile it or something along those lines? Um, well, one, we don't own this field, we rent it. And um, tile is expensive, especially to pay for in fields that you don't own or to pay for in fields that you don't farm, as in our landlord's case. So, uh, that's a challenge. And also, this is the field that we had planted weed in really late and had intentions. Send it. No, we ain't sending it. Had intentions of having weed out here. It got planted too late. The stand was no good, so we tore it out. And um, we are going to attempt to plant wheat here again this fall and have wheat here next summer so that we can at least do some dirt work, some surface drainage stuff, and try and fill in some of those pockets and, and get the water to drain off and just feel better. Okay, we got the back part of this. There's a big wet hole here. Kind of, uh, yeah, we're in this big area here, so I'm gonna make another pass up here, which is in the front of this. Looks like we need to get down here with a mower. We've got a willow tree forest starting. I'm gonna knock that out before they get too big to mow. And uh, just clean up a little bit around the field edges at least. So um, we are in our window, I guess, to mow some of the filter strips and stuff that are in the government programs. Uh, we are restricted from being able to mow it. Uh, in Michigan, it is between August 1st and August 15th, so time to get it done. Okay, well I got that other field done and then I basically was able to go around the outside of this one. There's only like 30 acres in this field and uh, we're empty. So it's nine o'clock, we gotta get back to the farm and go up and move our irrigation stuff. We'll be done here in 15 minutes or so and then we're gonna load up and keep spraying some more after that, so. Let's keep moving. Try and fold the booms in nice and gently. Alright. Alright, I'm up here in the irrigation field. Our gun is sitting way down there on the north end as far as we go. Um, we're going to come and sit right here at this one. This is the one right before my valve so I can shut off all the pipe going that way. Uh, and we're going to make a pull right down our center lane. I've talked about this a little bit before, but the way that that gun works is it's shooting water out we're shooting almost 200 feet right and um what that does is it pushes water well past how far we pull it but it doesn't actually water the area right around where the traveler sits very well because it's just shooting over it and so uh, i always like to pull this one right down the center just to try and catch some of that stuff you get a little bit more overlap but you catch some that you didn't before so um from from that spot right there 
we can pull the gun all the way out. It doesn't quite make it to where it's setting now, um, but most of the way there, and we get a lot of this. Problem is we've got this one big mud hole that we've got to deal with and hope it doesn't flip our gun cart over. Should get the backhoe up here and try and get some dry dirt and stuff it in there or something, I don't know. But anyway, um, we're gonna do that. And then that is actually the first lane that we did not water uh, when we just started here. So that was the last one we did before it started raining. Uh, so we're just gonna leave it there and start start pulling back and forth east and west and working our way back to the south towards the pump from there. Cause this next lane, that we're coming up to is where we started on Saturday. So we've watered everything basically from here north uh, since Saturday. Yeah, that rut's getting a little deep, but I will full send this one. We're gonna try and stay out of it. We'll probably fall in. Oh, let's hit the hip lock pedal. Don't slide into the pipe. Uh-oh. Traveler fell in the rut. It's actually firming up, that's good. We'll close the pipe off and let it air out for a few days and maybe it'll get even better. So like I said, we're gonna set up there and pull back down the center lane. After that run, then we'll make these two pulls and we'll keep working our way that way. But right here is my inline valve. So we need to close this that will essentially shut off the pipe beyond this point and uh, then all the water will drain out of there but then see every time we shut the pump off basically it leaks out of all of these joints and the seals here so by shutting this off uh, the water in the pipe's going to drain out but it won't get new water fresh water every time which then leaks out and makes wet spots worse so all right there's that and we'll get her set up, then we gotta walk down and get our 7520 to pull it out. All right, that pump is running, and it'll be done at eight o'clock tonight. Um, given that it's gonna be done at eight o'clock, we'll probably just shut it off or get it ready for the next pull and then shut it off for a couple hours, start it up at 10 or 11 so that it makes a full pull overnight. I don't have to come at five in the morning, I can come at seven or eight in the morning. Back to spraying. We're getting loaded up. We're going to do this one more load with uh, fungicide and insecticide, finish the field that we were in, a couple other smaller ones. Uh, then we're going to put this stuff in. This is the enlist that I pumped out of that shuttle yesterday when I was cleaning it out. I think that was yesterday, yeah. Um, we got a field with some air stale in it, so we're going to use that up. We'll spray it, and then we'll go back to fungicide and insecticide this afternoon. There are some decent beans out here in these later planted ones. They're really spotty though, so there's another field right on the other side of that lane over there. It's all part of the same farm, we just, they're separate fields. And that one was planted, I want to say three or four days after this side was. I'll have to look at the planting dates though, and they don't look near as good. Um, just a lot more uneven and up and down and smaller. So we're going to spray them, at least the good parts over there. Or, yeah, I'll show you when we get over there. Um, maybe the fungicide will help perk them up. and start them a little bit but we're also supposed to get hot here tomorrow and over the next couple of days and the fungicide is often a good uh, stress reliever for the plants and will help keep them going when it, uh, conditions are not favorable. Baby deer. Yeah they're cute and all until they start eating all your crops. Okay so we're on the other side of the house in that lane now you can see how they're just, they're a lot more thin spots, they're up and down. This is also the field where we had those beans that got sprayed with Enlist that shouldn't have gotten sprayed with Enlist. Uh, we aren't going to spray those because, well, I'm not entirely convinced that they're going to yield enough to pay back what this fungicide's going to cost us. No, they'll, they'll be at least that good, but it's just, there's not enough upside there to do it. So, uh, we're going to make one more pass, we'll overlap our boom or hang it out over them beans a little bit, so we'll have at least a trial. Uh, of what that the fungicide would have done, but I, there's just not much over there. You can see right where the variety change was. These are enlist beans. Those are extend flex beans. They got sprayed with about an ounce and a half of enlist. Dad had a little bit of solution left in the tank when he mixed up the herbicide pass for this field. Did not put enlist in, but didn't get it completely emptied from the pass before. So 
Uh, more of them died than I thought. The stand is worse than I thought after we first looked at them and I decided not to replant them. But that was like the 28th of June anyway. It was late and uh, I thought they were, some were gonna survive. And some did survive, but more died than I, than I anticipated. So it is what it is, it'll be fine. All right, I came to another field because I had about 10 acres of spray left and uh, we just ran out. Let's see, what did I do? And 10 and a half. Um, we're gonna switch to that Enlist now and that means I need to change my nozzles. Uh, I gotta use different nozzles for the Enlist than we do for the um, fungicide. And so I want to flush the boom out and get all the insecticide out of there so that it's not there while I'm changing nozzles. So this uh, has an option to do a boom only rinse. So we are going to check that button and I don't really know how it works, but we're gonna try it. Maybe I need to drive and turn it on. I don't know, I don't know. But we have a fresh water tank that's just clean water or sitting right on top of it. Uh, and so it pulls water from that instead of from the solution tank so that you can flush all the chemicals out of the boom. All right, we've made it to the field that we need to spray our mare's tail. I am switching nozzles and then we'll do the spray in and then we gotta switch everything back. Spraying herbicide is different than fungicide. We actually have to get in the corners and cover the entire field. Can you see all those mare's tail poking up? That's why we're here. They're bad and there are areas that are worse. So hopefully this will take care of them. It should. Um, you can also see how much different our spray pattern looks with these different nozzles. Much coarser droplets. We're not running nearly as much pressure. Partially because I'm driving slower. Um, but instead of twin jets, these are a single uh, hole in the nozzle. And so they don't, they don't put out the, the finer mist that we were seeing with the fungicide. We just need to get it on the plants. We don't have to coat the plants. Also, the neighbor is having some uh, manure drag lined on, it looks like. Well, they're not moving at the moment, but I'll try and show you that a little bit. It might get a chance when I'm not actually having to steer. Right. So you can see over there, they've got a uh, uh, big like pump tank thing with a pump on it that they're hooking their drag line up to. All those trucks along the road are bringing manure in, liquid. They've got hose laying out across the field. There's a tractor over there. I believe that one is just there to move the hose around. And then the other one over there, a little bit farther, is the one doing the actual application and drag lining and uh, applying the manure. They're going, they're going this way now. I guess they are still. I thought earlier I saw them going kind of on the opposite angle. They will probably apply that field more than once. So I'm not surprised there. But anyway, I'm done here. I zoom out. Anyway. Um, we got this front field done. Hopefully that'll take care of these mares tail. We've got to jump across the ditch and do the back field here. That one is just as bad. This is, uh, I'm not, I'm, yeah, less than thrilled about the fact that they're there. We've got to do a better job and figure out uh, what we did different here that makes this field worse than every other field that we have as far as the mares tail, because that is unacceptable. All right, we are done with this. Tank was empty right as I was coming up. I had just almost the perfect amount, and uh, we've got 95% of the mare's tail, 99% of the mare's tail sprayed. Hopefully they all die, and this field looks better in a week or two. So back to the farm. We've got uh, four, seven more loads of fungicide to get sprayed. Three of those are in Berkey, um, which I'm planning and hoping to go there tomorrow. I would like to get at least two more loads done here today. I'm not the only one out spraying today. Oh, God. Well, we're back into fungicide on beans. These are some of our later poor beans. This is probably our worst field of beans. At least the one that will help for the corn next year. That is a giant pile of chicken litter. Now we have to dance around it and it's poles over here. Thread the needle. Again, uh, 
Um, just about empty, actually. Two gallons left. Should be out any second. We'll listen for the wine. Um, more crappy beans. All of the beans that we've been in today, except for the ones we sprayed insecticide on, have just been not great beans. They got lots of thin spots and holes, and they're just not great. Um, that's they're later planted onto wet farms, and that's what happens when we plant into wet conditions. So I don't know. We got to figure something else out and do a better job because half or so of our beans are not very good, and we're empty. So, we're going to fold up and get out of here and head back to uh, the farm. We got two more loads to spray at Waldron here. I don't know if I want to do them tonight. Alright, here's the deal. We got two more loads of fungicide to spray here at Waldron. We got three to spray in Berkey. We're going to finish it tomorrow one way or the other. Um, the one load, the one field that I have to do up here is kind of on the way to Berkey. Vaguely, but it is in that general direction. So, we're going to spray the other one right now. We'll load up one in the morning, spray that one as we're heading to Berkey, go down there, spray our three, and come back and be done. So, that's what we're going to do. One more here tonight. 8.56 gallons of Carabas Neo. gallons of water that's our mix for today that's what we've been spraying all day so i'm using that lamb cap too it is uh it is generic warrior two uh pyrethroid it it is one of the two components that's in my indigo it's the same thing the indigo just has an added active thiomethoxin that gives us really good residual and a little bit better uh kill on some of the bigger insects i guess i don't know um but we're using a 1.6 ounce rate of this lamb cap too. This is the same stuff we sprayed last year for the aphids. It'll work. It just, it's going to knock everything down and that's it. It isn't going to be there in two or three weeks to keep them from coming back. So, um, but the Endigo is over $5 an acre. This stuff is under two and, um, well, I don't know if there's enough of a difference to justify that or not. So that's why we're using the lamb cap on part of it. All right, let's talk about the economics of what we're doing a little bit, because I'm showing you that we're not spraying our best beans here. So you may be wondering, much as I do sometimes, is it worth even spraying these beans? Because we're not, we're not, this is not a cheap application here. We're spending a lot of dollars to do this, right? So it's got to pay back. So I'm not going to give you super specific numbers, but the two things that we're putting in here, the fungicide and the insecticide, uh, depending on which insecticide we use, it's costing us between $19 and $23 roughly for this application, okay? The price of soybeans right now for fall delivery, I can sell them right now for $14.28 a bushel. That's a pretty good price. So if you figure we've got 20-ish, a little over $20 an acre into the chemicals, the sprayer pass is not free. It costs me diesel time maintenance, wear and tear, depreciation. Like there's some expense per acre into that stuff. So let's just call it an even two bushels. That'd be like 28 something, $29 uh, dollars an acre, two bushels of soybeans. Okay. So is what we're applying going to increase our yields by more than two bushel an acre? Well, yeah, I think it is. Our history tells us that yes, this is a no-brainer application, you do it, whether your beans look great or not. And so that's why we're doing it. That's why I'm not gonna worry about the cost or the fact that our beans don't look great because every year, year in and year out, this application pays off for us. We make money spraying fungicide on soybeans. So uh, there's a better chance that it's a five bushel increase than a two bushel increase and at five bushel we're more than doubling our money and it's well worth it so now i'll still be 
you know, pretty happy if this field makes 50. I don't think they're great beans. We're lucky to get 50 bushel on most of the beans that we were spraying today, which is not great. But if I don't spray them, maybe they're only 45 bushel beans. If we do, maybe they're 48, maybe they're 50, maybe they're 52. I don't know. Um, the ones that we sprayed last week that were planted earlier, it may be the difference between 55 and 60 or 60 and 70 or who knows. Uh, I have seen 10 to 15 bushel increases from spraying this fungicide pass. And so, yeah, the economics still work. It's not cheap. We're spending a lot of dollars. Um, you know, if you figure, let me pull up my calculator here real quick. If you figure that um, it's costing us $23, say, for an acre and we're spraying 80 acres on a fill, that means every time I load the sprayer up, it's over $1,800 just in chemicals. So, it has to pay back, and um, I, I believe that it will. All right, well, we're done uh, spraying for tonight. We've got one more day of it tomorrow. We did, uh, what did I look up, 460-some acres today. That's a good day. Uh, we got like 320-ish to go, all right? Four loads, 80 acres apiece, so yeah. Anyway, we're gonna scout some fields, but we gotta make a stop at the seed warehouse first. All right, so a while ago, I bought some stickers from Farm Focus from some of the videos and brands that I watch, and now I have my own stickers, and I've been trying to figure out what am I gonna do with these. Brian, from Brian's Farming Videos, he put his on the inside of the door on his service body truck I saw in one of his videos. Well, he just sold that truck, so now he's, all his stickers are gone, so if you sent him one, he doesn't have it anymore. So I thought, what can I do with them? Well, I have doors in my seed warehouse that I put all kinds of stuff on. We're gonna slap them on there. There we go. A couple Border View Farm stickers. Got my Millennial Farmer, Brian's Farming videos. We got some farm focused ones. And I, I, you can't see it, but there's a big Swede sticker there. So if anybody's got stickers, you want me to put them on the door, mail them to me. There's an address in the description. All right, we're gonna do a little scouting here. Uh, I was in this field about a week ago. And um, okay, I already found something. So this is a field of uh, O3B96, our candy corn, right? And this hybrid, I know what it does. It, it produces really, really awesome grain quality, super dark orange kernels, really high test weight. Great, great product from a grain quality standpoint. Pretty good yield, terrible stalks, terrible disease resistance, right? So this is the one that um, I don't plant a lot of it. I can't afford to have a bunch of down corn and it concerns me, but it's 103 days, so it's early enough that I can harvest it early. Should be pretty dry in the fall. And uh, when we spray it with fungicide and we manage it, we know that we're gonna take care of it. Now, when I was out here a week ago, we saw a lot of this kind of stuff. And if you look at this leaf from the backside, you can see all those spots in it. Uh, I sent that a picture of that to my agronomist. He thought it might be the start of some rust coming in. Definitely some disease. Now, I should note that this strip where we are did not get sprayed with a fungicide. We sprayed 90% of this variety and left about three planter passes, three or four planter passes that did not get it, just to kind of for a test strip in comparison. So I wanted to come into here. I want to look for tar spot. I wanted to see how that spots was progressing but look what i found right here you see that lesion that big brown spot on that leaf that is northern corn leaf blight here's another one that's the first northern corn leaf blight i have seen all year right here this little dark spot right at the tip of my finger i'm pretty sure is gray leaf spot the little black spots on the top of the leaf, I'm pretty sure are tar spot. Yeah, the disease is coming in here and it's gonna tear it apart. There's more Northern, look at that. That's interesting. There's some tar spot. I really, I'm surprised how little the tar spot has progressed since I first started to see it. Um, I'm actually backing off on how bad I think that it could be because it's not progressing. We found tar spot probably three weeks ago. Uh, I expected it to be common and to be on every leaf and just to be everywhere by this point. And it's not. It's not spreading like it did last year. Whether that's weather conditions or what, I don't know. 
Um, but that is a good thing. Now we're starting to see the other diseases show up. I don't know what this is. Um, and I'm not saying that we don't have tar spot. We do, and it still could explode at any point. But it has not gotten as bad as quickly as I thought that it might. So that is good. But we've got gray leaf spot. We've got some rust starting. We've got northern corn leaf blight coming in. Look at all those black spots there. Yeah, the fungicide was still the right thing to do. And while we're looking at leaf tissue, we should also look at some ears. And holy cow, are these things progressing? We've got some big, fat, honking ears on there. Like, look at them things. Those are really nice-looking ears. Really fat, progressing, getting, yeah. We're going to pull one and uh, husk it and see what stuff looks like here. But this is impressive-looking ears. I think it looks good. Big yellow kernels, nice looking ear. We're definitely progressing. I would say we're starting to move out of that milk stage towards the dough stage, which would be our four corn. Um, the next stage would be for it to start denting and working its way towards maturity. And well, that's a good thing, but we got lots of time yet, so we don't need it to get there. Let's just keep growing big fat kernels. That one is an 18 by 42 ear. That's good, that's, that's good corn. But I bet these kernels don't weigh as much as the kernels in our irrigated stuff will. Okay, so we're out here in another cornfield. Um, this one, the whole thing got sprayed with fungicide. We're looking at hybrids out here and differences between them. So we're standing in a split row. This side is 107 day golden harvest, 07 G73, which is a pretty new 107 day. This is the first year we've really planted much of it. I had just a couple bags last year that we got out in the field. This side is a new for 23. 06A97, 27, something. I'm not sure exactly. I don't remember. I'd have to look it up. Um, but I want to see what this one looks like because I have not yet seen it. This one here, when we had it last year, we had a little bit of an issue with some silk balling and it not pollinating well. And what I'm seeing right here is one, our stand is not great. Um, <laughs> this was planted on April 30th and we got rained out in this field. So it got planted right ahead of a rain. Um, but we've got a wide range of maturities here. You'll see we've got brown silks to fresh silks and still shedding pollen. Uh, that's not great. We don't like to see that. I would prefer it all be more even growth stage, but I have little control over that at this point. So um, I wanted to look at the ears over here and some on this side, and we'll just kind of compare a little bit. So this 07G, it's got good ears, um, but I'm seeing some of the things that were causing us problems last year. I kind of destroyed it. Now you won't be able to see the silks too well, but um, essentially the silks kind of get all twisted up on the end of the ear in there, and they don't come out. And then we end up with these tips that don't pollinate. Like that whole piece right there is not going to grow. These did not get pollinated. Same thing on this ear. I see quite a bit of that. So while it still may be very good corn, that doesn't look great. It's not a good sign. So um, last year they thought it was environmental conditions that were causing that. Now I'm wondering if it's not genetics that are causing it. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take it to yield and see how it does. But the stuff like that might be a kiss of death to a hybrid. Now I walked a few rows out into our 06, the new 106 day, and we don't see that at all. These tips are completely pollinated right out to the very end. This one was still a little more immature. Uh, this one here looks really nice. Uh, totally different look to them. And who knows? This one might be really good. We just got to give it some time and take it to yield and see what happens. But uh, that's promising. Things like that are why I really, really like to plant a hybrid on my own farm before I sell it to my customers. This is the advantage that I have as a farmer dealer is that I am spending an extensive amount of time looking at these products and raising them and growing them and knowing where they work, where they don't, and uh, hopefully can help my customers choose the best things for their acre. And so um, I, I did not sell very much of that 07G this year, maybe just a little bit to customers outside of myself, um, but the vast majority of it. I am planting as a way to get another look at it because I knew there was a potential problem there. Now that I'm seeing that problem again, unless it just blows us away in the yield department, which I, I mean, it's possible, but I don't expect, 
I'm not going to take that chance of selling it to my customers. I'm going to sell stuff that I know works. So anyway, there's my seed plug. Now in that last field, I just got done telling you how the tar spot hasn't really been progressing much. And it's still not bad, but there's a, a dozen lesions on this particular leaf. And this did get sprayed. So maybe it is progressing. Maybe that is something that we really need to keep a very close eye on over the next few weeks. Although other disease, I don't see any of it. Those spots looking through the back of the leaves into the light, very, very little of that. I haven't seen any northern out here, uh, gray leaf spot, any of that. So some tar spot, yes, but for the most part, it's very healthy. Okay, well, I'm going home. I gotta go do irrigation stuff at like 8.30, so I'm gonna fuel up the, put fuel in the tank on the black truck there. We gotta take fuel up and stuff, but other than that, we had a good day. We had a lot of beans sprayed. We're gonna finish spraying them tomorrow, get our ones done down to Berkey, and then tomorrow night it's gonna rain. It's gonna rain, okay? I'm telling you, it's gonna rain. So we're gonna be done before that, and then we're gonna watch it rain. That's the idea. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great night. If you have any questions, comments, leave them down below. And uh, if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button. If you want a Border View Farm sticker, they are available on farmfocus.com. And uh, there's also some nice shirts and hoodies and hats there. Go pick one up for me. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. We'll talk to you later.